Welcome back to another video on NSU Electrical Trade Theory. Don't forget to like and to share these videos. This is a brand new curriculum for N2 Electrical Trade Theory. In this video, we take a look at module four, which is all about switch gear and protective devices. And this makes up 10% of the national exam paper. In unit 4.1 on switch gear, there are different types of switch gear. It consists of switches, fuses, circuit breakers, which are used to control and protect electrical systems. A disconnector, which is an offload type of oscillator. They are manually operated and can be locked in the off position. They are not designed for arcing that occurs during opening and closing of live circuits. The switch disconnector, which is an onload type of oscillator, it is a mechanical switching device used to break current flow under normal circuit conditions. They are designed to handle arcing during opening and closing of live electrical circuits. For relays, it is a small electromagnetic device used to handle small currents. It is for the control of low current circuits and to reduce voltage drops between the supply and load. It consists of a solenoid, iron armature and contacts. They are used in motor vehicle circuits to control the lights. For contactors, they are large electromagnetic device used to handle larger currents. They consist of a solenoid, main and auxiliary contacts. The main contacts allow for current flow from the supply and the auxiliary contacts switch other circuits on and off. They are used for the switching of large induction motors. For timing devices, it consists of an electromagnetic switch and a built-in clock, and they are used to automatically switch on or off other devices, mainly used in pool pumps and irrigation circuits. For a day and night switch, it consists of a photocell, transistor, and a relay. The photocell senses natural light and switches on a light bulb as it gets darker. It automatically switches on lights at dusk, such as street lightning. We get single phase circuit breakers like the thermal type and the hydraulic type. So let's first take a look at the thermal type circuit breaker. Under overload conditions, when current exceeds the rated value, it generates enough heat buildup for the bar metal strip to bend and trip the contacts. Under short circuit conditions, a large fault current will cause the attraction of the iron armature, which will trip the contacts. In terms of time delay with regards to the thermal type, it is the time that it takes for the bar metal strip to heat up and bend. For the hydraulic type circuit breaker, which will not be influenced by external temperature, when current exceeds the rated value, the electromagnetic field is strong enough to move the piston and cause the breaker to trip. Under short circuit conditions, movement of the piston is quick and trips the breaker immediately. With regards to time delay, it is the time that it takes for the piston to displace the oil. What do we mean by overload rating? It is the maximum current that can flow before tripping. What do we mean by short circuit rating? It is the maximum fault current that the circuit breaker can withstand. Let's look at some protective devices. And the first one is the fuse. The function of a fuse is to detect overcurrents and short circuit currents and to automatically disconnect the supply. Fuses should be marked with the maximum permissible current rating. In terms of the different types of fuses, we get rewirable fuses. The construction is simple, they are reusable, and circuits can be restored quickly and cheaply. The rating of the fuse is not accurate, low rupturing capacity, and their operation is slow. For blade type fuses, they protect circuits and motor vehicles. A cartridge fuse, also known as a high rupturing capacity fuse. The fuse rating is more accurate. The element does not deteriorate. They require no maintenance and they have an indicative element. 
An overload relay, also known as an OLR, mainly used on faceplate starters and for the protection of three-phase motors. And OLR is used to protect motors from overcurrents. The four main components of the overload relay consist of a bimetal strip, a heating element, snap action contacts, and a resetting device. Time delay is obtained in the thermal type overload relay. It is the time that it takes for the bimetal strip to heat up. In terms of the effect of ambient temperature, external heat will cause the overload relay to trip sooner. In terms of severe starting, we will end up with locked rotors or mechanical faults with regards to our motors. An earth leakage relay, under normal conditions, currents through the lab and neutral phase are the same size. The magnetic fields produced are also equal in size and magnitude. Under overload conditions, the magnetic fields and currents through the lab and neutral phase are not the same in size and magnitude. And there is a phase imbalance. There is also a test button on the earth leakage relay, which simulates a fault condition and test the effectiveness of the unit. In terms of the code of practice, earth leakage relays shall disconnect both phase and neutral in a single phase system, and it shall disconnect all three phases in a three phase system. What do we mean by flashover and transient? Well, flashover, it is high voltage surges across the air gap between conductors. A transient fault lasts for a very, very short time. A lightning arrestor protects against high voltage surges and transient voltages and is directed to ground immediately and is found on high voltage distribution networks and usually protects again lightning. A surge protector mainly found in our commercial and domestic homes. It is a device to protect electrical equipment from over voltage or current transients. A earthing compensator, also known as a zigzag type transformer, overhead transmission lines do not have a neutral conductor and that is for the delta connected side of a transformer. Why do we use delta on the secondary side? Well, it saves in conductor material, there's less weight, and we can use smaller pylons. An earthing transformer, known as a zigzag transformer, is used to provide an earth through the neutral winding. An auto recloser detects flashovers, voltage surges, and transient voltage. It is designed to automatically disconnect the line and can be switched on again. And this, this decreases the downtime on the network whenever there's a fault. Thanks for watching this video. Please remember to smash that like button and thanks for supporting.